After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, and I am fully pleased with him. Chapter 4 Then Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted there by the devil. For forty days and forty nights he ate nothing and became very hungry. Then the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, change these stones into loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say people need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He orders his angels to protect you and they will hold you with their hands to keep you from striking your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, Do not test the Lord your God. Next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him the nations of the world and all their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will only kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, You must worship the Lord your God, serve only Him. Then the devil went away, and angels came and cared for Jesus. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. But instead of going to Nazareth, he went to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy, in the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach, Turn from your sins and turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon also called Peter, and Andrew, fishing with a net, for they were commercial fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Come, be my disciples, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and went with him. A little farther up the shore he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets and he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching everywhere the good news about the kingdom. And he healed people who had every kind of sickness and disease. News about him spread far beyond the borders of Galilee, so that the sick were soon coming to be healed from as far away as Syria. And whatever their illness and pain or if they were possessed by demons or were epileptics or were paralyzed, he healed them all. Large crowds followed him wherever he went, people from Galilee, the Ten Towns, Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River. Chapter 5 One day, as the crowds were gathering, Jesus went up the mountainside with his disciples and sat down to teach them. This is what he taught them. God blesses those who realize their need for Him, for the kingdom of heaven is given to them. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are gentle and lowly, for the whole earth will belong to them. God blesses those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, for they will receive it in full. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted because they live for God, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when you are mocked and persecuted and lied about because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted too. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it useful again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. 
You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, let your good deed shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to fulfill them. I assure you, until heaven and earth disappear, even the smallest detail of God's law will remain until its purpose is achieved. So, if you break the smallest commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you. Unless you obey God better than the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees do, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven at all. You've heard that the law of Moses says, "Do not murder." If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you say to your friend, "You idiot," you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are standing before the altar in the temple offering a sacrifice to God, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there beside the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Come to terms quickly with your enemy before it's too late and you are dragged into court, handed over to an officer, and thrown in jail. I assure you that you won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that the law of Moses says, "Do not commit adultery." But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust in his eye has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So, if your eye, even if it is your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even if it is your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. You have heard that the law of Moses says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a letter of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that the law of Moses says, "Do not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you have made to the Lord." But I say, don't make any vows. If you say by heaven, it is a sacred vow because heaven is God's throne, and if you say by the earth, it is a sacred vow because the earth is His footstool. And don't swear by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great King. Don't even swear by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple yes, I will, or no, I won't. Your word is enough. To strengthen your promise with a vow shows that something is wrong. You have heard that the law of Moses says, if an eye is injured, injure the eye of the person who did it. If a tooth gets knocked out, knock out the tooth of the person who did it. But I say, don't resist an evil person. If you are slapped on the right cheek, turn the other too. If you are ordered to court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask, and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard that the law of Moses says, "Love your neighbor and hate your enemy." But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for He gives His sunlight to both the evil and the good, and He sends rain on the just and on the unjust too. If you love only those who love you, what good is that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Chapter six. Take care. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired, because then you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give a gift to someone in need, don't shout about it as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I assure you, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing, 
if your gifts in secret and your Father who knows all secrets will reward you. And now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I assure you that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father secretly. Then your Father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered only by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, because your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Give us our food for today, and forgive us our sins, just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do who try to look pale and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I assure you, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will suspect you are fasting except your Father, who knows what you do in secret. And your Father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. Don't store up treasures here on earth where they can be eaten by moths and get rusty and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where they will never become moth-eaten or rusty and where they will be safe from thieves. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart and thoughts will also be. Your eye is a lamp for your body. A pure eye lets sunshine into your soul, but an evil eye shuts out the light and plunges you into darkness. If the light you think you have is really darkness, how deep that darkness will be. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So I tell you, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food, drink, and clothes. Doesn't life consist of more than food and clothing? Look at the birds. They don't need to plant or harvest or put food in barns because your heavenly Father feeds them. And you are far more valuable to Him than they are. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Of course not. And why worry about your clothes? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't He more surely care for you? You have so little faith. So don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Why be like the pagans who are so deeply concerned about these things? Your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs, and He will give you all you need from day to day if you live for Him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Chapter 7 Stop judging others, and you will not be judged. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, Friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite! First get rid of the log from your own eye, then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with a speck in your friend's eye. Don't give what is holy to unholy people. Don't give pearls to swine. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds, and the door is open to everyone who knocks. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children— 
how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Do for others what you would like them to do for you. This is a summary of all that is taught in the Law and the Prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose the easy way. But the gateway to life is small, and the road is narrow, and only a few ever find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really wolves that will tear you apart. You can detect them by the way they act, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit. You don't pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. A healthy tree produces good fruit, and an unhealthy tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, the way to identify a tree or a person is by the kind of fruit that is produced. Not all people who sound religious are really godly. They may refer to me as Lord, but they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey my Father in heaven. On judgment day, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Go away. The things you did were unauthorized. Anyone who listens to my teaching and obeys me is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse, because it is built on rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will fall with a mighty crash. After Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught as one who had real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law.